Um, okay. I think we've had a slight issue here with our chicken coop. Let's do some cleanup. I've collected all the chickens. That was uh, mm, interesting, to say the least. I got through about 15 of those chicken catching nets, and we've got an inventory absolutely full of them now, so we're going to have to put these back in their place. This did hold them in, but apparently it, it doesn't anymore. I, I don't really get why. So we're going to grab some white glass, we're going to trap them back in their cages, and then we'll actually get started on the episode. Chickens are all back in their homes, and I actually decided to use the trap door instead of glass, because that way I can always add more chickens if I need to. But it's noisy over here! Right, where were we? So on the last episode of Skybound, we got involved in some automation and we trapped Mr. Onion in a box. On this episode, we expand our automation, make our way to the most expensive fishing location in the world, and add a couple more buildings to the island. And that's mostly the truth, but there is a, there, there was a slight lie in there, in that I've already actually expanded some of the automation. Not too much, but I have just sorted out the auto-sorted storage area, and there's another chicken. Oh, jeez. I don't even have a net this time. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. And now I'm starving to death. What a start to the episode. So at the end of the last episode, we had this system working where we were compressing all of the things from over in our chicken shed. I say all of the things. We've actually still got a few more to add. But I've now added another system. So we can actually flick this lever here and this will feed the compressed items over to this side and put them through the automated sieve, which is now being operated by Mr. Sloy XP. Mr. Onion had to get retired. I just couldn't keep him around, even though he was locked in a box. So everything that gets filtered from here then goes into these hoppers, and that goes into another dropper spitter system type thing, and everything then gets sent up here, where we have our automated storage, or at least the start of our automated storage. And look at all the netherite ore we have in here. We are absolutely loaded on that stuff. So I've only sorted out certain things. There are other bits that go through the system that we're just going to be disposing of. And occasionally stuff does get missed. And I don't know why this keeps happening. But every now and then, Mr. Sloy here decides he doesn't want to actually sieve something. And I can't figure that out. So we might need to do a bit of finessing to get that working properly. So I think the first thing we're going to do today is maybe put a building around this little thing here. We don't really need it any bigger than it already is. That's okay. That's a normal chicken. You can still die though. I just don't think I'm ever going to feel the same way about chickens ever again. But let's get this looking a bit nicer and we need to give some thought to this one here as well. I'm probably just going to turn this into a giant warehouse because then we can actually just have some manual storage in the middle as well and it gives us plenty of space to expand the auto storage if and when we need to. And don't worry, we're still going to be fishing throughout the episode as well. But as you can see from the fanciness of that lake, we are getting very close to the final lake. And when we get there, we'll actually explore it properly and see what we can catch and so on. And I might even make a fish museum at some point just to show everything that we've caught so far. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's put down another building. One a bit like that, maybe. In fact, I actually really like that. I think that works a treat. So we've actually followed a very similar style to this one. I've actually used clay and gravel at the top there. Bit of a weird mix, but it seems to work. But this building perfectly houses the Zloy sieve machine. Not that it sieves Zloy's, but you know what I mean. And if we go in here, we can see everything in action. We can even get upstairs if we ever decide to do anything with it, which once again, we probably won't. But now we've got this one over here working i think what i actually want to do is to get our warehouse in i don't know exactly how this is gonna work but it will probably work something like this i guess yeah yeah i think that works that's all right isn't it so we've got plenty of space on the inside we've got all of our auto sorted storage that wraps around the outside here and then we've got lots of manual storage here so we can finally move out of our underground cave which i'm very very excited about this side, however, haven't quite decided what to do with it yet, and not really a fan of this sort of back of these chests, but for now it's just hidden until we do figure out what we're going to do over here. And from the outside, I do actually think that ties in quite well. Probably because we've used the same resources. There is, however, one thing I still need, and you can probably tell by looking at the side of this wall what that is, and yes, detail, but we really need some granite, and I have absolutely no granite at the moment, but we need some for texturing on all three of these buildings that are making use of the brick and the terracotta, it's just still a little bit too noisy over there for me. So yeah, granite, we'll sort that out. The problem is we have no way of collecting granite. However, I believe we can make it. So if we have diorite and nether quartz, we can make granite, but we don't have diorite either. So how do we make diorite? So for diorite, we need cobble, 
and nether quartz. And I know for a fact we've got plenty of cobble because, well, we've got a cobble generator. Don't know why I said it like that. But conveniently, over here, we have a lot of, uh, of, of nether quartz. Wow. Well, yeah, we've actually got lots more than I initially thought. However, we need to cook that up to make that useful. And in order to cook that up, we're going to need furnaces. And we've got four furnaces down there, but we're going to need a lot of this stuff. So my thinking is, it's probably about time we made a quick and dirty furnace array. In fact, that's probably the perfect thing to put in here somewhere. Hmm. So, funny story. In order to make a furnace array, I need lots and lots of hoppers. For lots of hoppers, I need lots of iron. And guess what? All my iron needs to be smelted. And for that, of course, I need a furnace array. So let's go build what? Wait a minute. Guess we're starting off with a manual one. And I have actually decided I'm not going to put the furnace array on this side. I'm actually just going to save that for future storage space because you never know, we may need it. And instead, I'm actually going to create a whole new building over here for a furnace array. So three buildings, one episode, marvellous. But first, of course, we need to smelt down all the iron. Jeez. And in fact, we might even need more iron than what we've got over there. So let's flick some levers and get some more iron producing. And we'll flick this one to feed all the gravel through from the chickens up the top. You're right there, buddy. Enjoying the view? I guess I guess I'm just gonna leave him there. I also need a whole bunch of coal for the furnaces, but luckily we've got loads of that as well. And there we go, everything is up and running. It looks horrible though. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is it is working. Although this one is to have something in it it shouldn't. There we go. And this should be bringing quartz into this chest here. Marvelous stuff. So what I'm gonna do while we're cooking up lots and lots of quartz so we can get all of the diorite and then the granite we need, I'm gonna make a start on this building and just get this looking a little bit nicer. We don't need to do too much. It'll probably only be a single story building this one. But then I thought that about the previous two buildings as well, and they ended up with two stories. So we'll see what happens. We did it. We made a mostly one story building. Although it does need a little bit more detail here and there. But overall, I'm very pleased with how that's come out. That's looking really good. It does tie in with the rest of the theme and everything we've got going on around here. Although one thing I can't figure out is how to turn up the render distance. Could well just be that it's something built into the map. I don't know. But either way, it'd be nice to be able to see my whole base. However, now the building's looking nice. This has taken me plenty long enough that we actually have a whole bunch of quartz in here now, although I do need to actually make space to pick it up. But we'll take a little bit for testing and we'll grab a stack of cobble as well. So if we turn that into diorite, we can then turn that same stack into granite. So if we just knock out a few blocks on this wall here. Oh, look at that. Much better. Excellent. You can see why I wanted granite now. It really does break up the walls a bit from this. So we're going to run around. We've got four buildings now that are going to need a bit of granite on them. And after that, I think we're just about ready to go and explore the final fishing lake. And then we're going to go to the arcade. We're going to spend a whole bunch of money. We're going to open up all of our loot boxes. Oh, it's going to be a glorious afternoon full of treasure. We've got our granite in on all of the buildings and it definitely makes a difference. It does sort of reduce the noise on the wall or at least give it a different type. And that just works really well for me. Burn to death, you. Get off my roof. But I think with that, that's just about enough building for today. Let's grab our fishing rod and go check out the Royal Lake, which I believe is the last one we need to go for. First up though, I do need to empty my inventory and I've come to the wrong place. I don't live here anymore. So we have our amazing fishing rod. It's only got luck of the C5 with lure 10, but that's because the treasure from up there isn't actually amazing. However, we do like the lots of fish because then we can get lots of coins. So we've gone with a high powered lure fishing rod. And yes, lure 10 is obviously a lot higher than you can get in vanilla and it's fantastic. I mean, just look at this puppy go. You put it in, and then almost straight away, you get yourself a hook. Excellent. And in fact, we actually just got a saddle there. Marvelous. And here we are in the Royal Fishing Lake. Wow, look at this place. It is gold. Even the water appears to be made of gold. That's quite incredible. But the important thing is this. So we can sell orange starfish, yellow jellyfish, and I guess just kind of normal guppies, goldfish type things. And look what we can sell them for. So this is going to be an amazing place for us to make a bunch of money. But it's, of course, not cheap to get here. But for now, I think I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to fish for a while and we're going to see how much money we can make. 
And look at that, straight away we got ourselves a goldfish. And if we look at the fisher, we can see that once we've actually leveled him up, we'll be able to sell that for two diamond coins, which is absolutely incredible. So yeah, we're going to fish here probably for an hour or so. We're going to get a whole buttload of money and then we're going to go have fun in the arcades. We're back from fishing and it was quite good. It was quite productive. Look at this. We've managed to get ourselves over two stacks of diamond coins, which is fantastic. A whole bunch of gold ones as well, which of course we can convert into diamond coins and some random shiny stuff and a few name tags. But we also got a whole bunch more keys as well, which if we combine all of this stuff with what we've got in this chest, that makes us extremely rich, extremely rich indeed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of these coins and we're going to take a whole bunch of the keys as well. And to be honest, I might just convert these into higher level keys quickly. Let's see what we can do. So I've converted them down. We've now got five epic loot keys and eight legendary loot keys. That feels like a good balance. And I'm also going to take some rusty keys with us as well. So I'm fairly sure if we're smart, we can actually use those to get another key type. Although I think I need more rusty coins as well as the rusty keys for that to work. Oh, it looks like the party's over. It's definitely a lot quieter over here compared to last time. That was crazy. So the first thing I want to do is to use the loot keys. So let's see what we get, shall we? Not a great start, if I'm honest. Although luck of a C7, not a bad rod. Well, that's everything we got from the rare loot keys. Nothing particularly fantastic, but certainly a couple of useful items in there. But more importantly, let's try the legendary keys. So I think the most interesting thing we got there was an industrial sieve. We did get a block of diamonds, some netherite and so on as well, and another automatic crusher. And we also got a golden tiger swallowtail butterfly and another golden garden snail. So we got some cool little bits and bobs there, but I'm beginning to think maybe I shouldn't have held onto the keys for quite so long because a lot of this stuff that we're getting now would have been useful a couple of episodes ago. So I'm going to offload all of this into our ender chest over here. And our next stop is going to be to go to the arcade. We've got a whole bunch of diamond coins here and I want to go have some fun. And that fun is going to start upstairs here at the claw grab machine. So this machine costs one diamond a time and and I've grabbed a few chests from here, a few random bits and bobs, but I want to see what else this has got to offer. So we're going to use at least a stack of these just in this machine alone. And we didn't get anything on the first grab. That's disappointing. Or the second. We're being robbed. Hey, we got something. Doesn't look like we've done too badly out of that. I don't really know what an orange prize box is. We've not had any of those before, but the rest of these, we'll open those shortly. The lucky blocks, however, we are going to open those over in the community area because I do not trust opening these on my island. They could be a little bit too dangerous. Before we open up anything at all, though, we've got a whole bunch of gold coins and we've got lots of arcade games here that we haven't played. We've played lots of the chicken one, but we barely even scratched the surface of the others. I think I've done like one round on all of them just to see what they were. So we've got loads of coins here. Let's see what we can spend. Oh, geez. Do we start with parkour? I guess we start with parkour, which means I'm probably going to die. So let's unload most of my stuff just in case. We'll just take a little bit of bread. Right. Let the arcade adventure begin. Let's just put that down to a full start, shall we? I hate parkour. Arcade fun has been had. We've got ourselves a few more goodies, including a diamond helmet. Not entirely sure how we got that. Might have been in one of the crafting ones. Not entirely sure. And I have to say, after playing all the games, Catch the Chicken is by far my favourite. And uh, parkour? Yeah, we don't talk about the parkour. So while we're over here in town, and before we open those lucky blocks and crates and all the other bits we've still got, there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to get another type of key 
that you can only get from the mysterious trader who lives down a well. This well right here, in fact, and I'm hoping I've got what I need to be able to actually get the keys from him, but I can't remember exactly what it was in the first place. Ah, and he's asleep. Next day, the mysterious trader is awake and we can actually reach him now. So, he has a key here somewhere. Yes, this one, the mysterious key. And to get that, we need to make some netherite coins. We're just going to convert all of those because we also need coins in order to buy some end portals, which we're getting close to being able to afford. However, we actually just spent all of our rusty coins and we're not going to have enough to get a whole portal. So that's something we're going to have to work towards. And I think the best way to get rusty coins is actually in the arcade. So we're probably going to be back there at some point later. But now, though, however, I'm going to buy three of these Thank mysterious you, keys uh, and we're going to see what they do, I guess. Let's go open them. I mean, they're very expensive keys and it says they can either be very good or very bad. So let's just hope we get the very good ones, shall we? And with that in mind, I'm going to get rid of absolutely everything in my inventory tree apart from the one key that i'm gonna use because if it is something very bad i don't want to go losing everything okay let's give this a go mr bedstone has destroyed the market square what do you mean i destroyed the market square what does that mean I mean, there is a Mr. Beardstone over here. Was it him? Did you destroy the market square? Hmm. Okay. Well, might as well go for another one. And it gave me a complete set of keys. Well, would you look at that? Say goodbye to all your items. Ha! Beat you, game. I've already put my items in here. Okay, didn't get rid of them as well. That's good. Oh, look at that. Lots of shiny things, including an enchanted apple. That is by far the best thing in that chest. But the rest of it, not really particularly useful. I have to say, I kind of feel like we got off a little bit lightly there, considering they could be very bad. I, I still don't know what destroying the market square was, though. That, that does actually concern me. Has, has something changed? I mean, it's a lot quieter. There's, there's no one around apart from Mr. Beardstone. Has that got something to do with it, maybe? There's literally no... No other AI anywhere. That is very unusual. So I guess that now it appears I've murdered everyone that was in the marketplace. We may as well come back here and uh, let's open up all those treats that we got earlier, shall we? That's a whole lot of food and keys. Chickens, chicken nets and keys. Not sure we really need any extra chickens, but we'll take them anyway. We definitely need some nets to replace the ones from the start of the episode. And we've got some rubbish books. So as expected, we've got a bunch of furniture and other useful items in those ones. I do quite like them. And nine epic loot keys. That's a whole bunch of keys. But now we're going to open the orange ones. I'm going to do these one at a time. I don't really know what to expect in these. We've not had any of these before. And what's this? Oh, it's another mini Dan Rob's props. It's a pet and a legendary key. Excellent. But we've got another pet. Are they all going to have pets in them? Oh my God, it's a tiny pig. And a pet bee as well. Oh my day. These are, these are amazing. Love them. Need more orange boxes. And we have another Dan Rob's props. We're going to have like a little army of these soon. How cool is that? We're going to have to make somewhere nice for all this sort of stuff. But I think that's going to have to wait for a future episode, as will the Lucky Blocks, because that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye-bye now. Dan, what are you doing riding me pig?